YouTube, what is up guys? Today, I'm gonna show you how to make Coca-Cola braised pulled pork. This is absolutely amazing. I used to work at a country club in my 20s, and this was the most popular item on our whole menu. You could supplement this with uh, root beer instead, or Dr. Pepper, or Cherry Coke, or really any brown soda, as long as it's not diet. You can mix and have fun with it. But at the restaurant, this is what we used, and this is what we're gonna use today. You're gonna need a pork shoulder, AKA a pork butt, uh, check your local grocery store. These go on sale at my local grocery stores at least like about once a month. This is normally 22 bucks. I got it for $8. So I usually buy these when they're on sale, throw them in the freezer, take them out when I have something like this. And you're going to need a roasting pan with a top. If you don't have a roasting pan with a top, don't go out and just buy one just for this. Just go to the dollar store, get the foil roasting pans, use foil on the top. Uh, I would recommend just getting two because they're usually two for a dollar anyways and just double lapping them in case you pop a hole in it or something. So this is real easy. It will be a whole lot of fun. We just got a little bit of prep we got to do with the pork. So let's go in the kitchen and let's get cooking. All right, first things first, we are going to have to cut this up. We want to cut it into about fist sized pieces. You don't want it too small, but you also don't want to leave it whole or it'll take forever. This is the trick to cooking it in an oven where it's only going to take you a couple hours. Okay, so use a knife that you don't care about. Like, don't use your most expensive knife. Also, don't use a knife with a really thin blade because there are some bones in here. You can chip your knife. So use, you know, a, a cheaper knife or your knife that's, you know, you normally use for things like this. See, there's a bone right here. So I'm just going to cut to the bone here. And then I'm just going to kind of cut this in half. This doesn't have to be perfect. It's not rocket science. Um, so that goes to the bone. I'm going to actually, you can, oh, let's just keep going and then we'll, we'll cut some off the bone from there. First, you kind of just want to start s sectioning it. See how I'm doing this? I'm just kind of cutting it down the middle. See, these parts don't have bones in them, so I'm just going to cut it like here. And once again, it doesn't have to be perfect. They don't have to be exactly the same. They just got to be kind of, kind of close. You know, so that's about the size you're looking for. About the size of my fist. Okay, same there. And then once you get them, you can kind of just start, you know, kind of eyeballing them. If some parts have more fat than others, it doesn't matter. You actually want that. You want you want variety. You want the spice of life, you know? Okay. Oops. Don't worry, I just washed the stove anyways, so that's okay. It got on there. And we're going to cook the hell out of it anyways. Okay, so we're going to get the oven preheated to... 375 while we do this okay and notice here I kind of just cut it off the bone here this chunk and then you know your last piece you can just leave the bone on there the bone will just fall out when it's all done cooking so this piece is a little bigger but there's a lot of bones in here and shit and uh, maybe I'll just cut one more slit through it there help it cook a little faster just like the rest of them okay so now we got those all they're all put in here. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to season them before we throw it in the in the oven. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to use mustard. Now this might sound weird at first, but if you've ever cooked any barbecue, usually mustard is what you use to make the rub stick to the meat. So once again, this isn't rocket science, something like that. And then wear gloves if you want to. If uh, you don't mind getting a little messy, you know, just make sure your hands are clean and just do one of these. We're just trying to get the mustard on about everything. And you're not going to taste this mustard when it's done. This is just the vinegars in the mustard um, and the mustard seed itself are going to help kind of break down the meat. And this is also going to give the rub something to stick to. You could do the same thing with Dijon mustard. Uh, it, that might just have a little bit of flavor left over when you're done cooking, but you, maybe you'll like that flavor. Um, I, you could use oil, but a lot of times it'll burn. So I do recommend only using the mustard. If you have to, use oil but there's a chance you'll burn it, so just telling you. Okay, so we got that all going, so let me uh, wipe off my hands really quick. I got my sink right here in the background. Okay, and we are back. Okay, we're gonna season it very simply. We're gonna use some very simple ingredients. We're gonna start with just salt. I'm using sea salt just because it's what I got here, and nothing too crazy, because pork is already kind of salty. Okay, I'm going to use granulated garlic or garlic powder would work fine, whatever whatever you got. For this, I'm going to use probably about a tablespoon. And I like to just throw it all on the top and then we're going to mix it all together anyways. Plus, you'll see, we're going to add liquids, so the liquids are going to help to kind of disperse everything. So you don't have to really be crazy. A regular black pepper. Pepper grinder takes, doesn't put out the most at a time, but that's pretty good. 
And um, this is the part where, you know, if you want a little, make it a little more peppery, make it a little more peppery, you know. But here we just want to get it seasoned before the initial cook. Okay, we got that. And then, rule of thumb I've always said is basically anything red. We got some paprika. I love paprika. So uh, I'm not going to be shy with this. Paprika is not too hot. If you're using something really spicy, you got to be shy, a little shy with it. But paprika will give it that nice red color. Uh, and it's also, you know, it tastes really good. Okay, now here's where the secret ingredient is going to come in. Coca-Cola. Now, normally I would use a can of Coke since all I had at the store was these 20 ounce bottles. We're not going to use this whole thing. I'm going to use about 12 fluid ounces. So a little more than half of this bottle. Okay, that's good. So, yeah, we can save that for a mixed drink or something. Uh, and lastly, you are going to use, where did I put it? Apple cider vinegar. This is also, if you've ever cooked anything barbecue, everything barbecue has apple cider vinegar in it. Um, for here, in this, we're going to put more in it after we shred it, uh, apple cider vinegar, but during the cook, we want a little vinegar to help break down the proteins as well. So, we're going to add about a half a cup, and I'm just going to eyeball that. That looked about a half a cup to me. All right, now we are going to throw it in the oven for 45 minutes uncovered. Then we are going to cover it and do it for at least another hour. Okay, so we're going to start off. Um, the oven's still preheating. As soon as the oven's preheated to 375, put it in the oven uncovered. You want a little bit of crust to start to form, and you want actually a little bit of this to start to evaporate. So first 45 minutes uncovered. Go ahead, throw it in, and I'll check back with you guys in 45 minutes. All right, guys, it has been 45 minutes at 375 uncovered. So let's take her out and uh, take a quick look. All right. So notice we are getting a little bit of a crust here. And let me zoom in here. And it's starting to look really good. We're starting to get a little bit of a reddish hue to everything. And all of our juices are starting to mix together. The fat from the pork with the Coca-Cola, with all the spices. Uh, it's all looking really good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to flip everything. Because even though we will cover it, it will still continue to brown and caramelize a little bit and stuff. So we're going to flip everything. Okay. Then we are going to put the top on it. And remember, if you don't have a top to use, just use foil. But make sure it's really tight. We're just going to cover the top. And we're going to put it in for another hour. Okay. So put it in for an hour. Set the timer, and we'll give it a check, and uh, see how she looks. Okay, guys, so it's been an hour, and we got it here out of the oven. And I just already took a quick look at it, moved it around a little bit. I, and it is not quite done, so we're probably going to put it in for about another half hour and check it, and then see if we got to go. But it's a good idea after an hour to kind of flip it, put all the parts that were getting more burnt at the top, flip them over, have them get in the braising liquid. And we are definitely getting there. Um, it is not, you don't want it completely falling apart, but you also don't want it where it's like, you know, still tough. It's definitely less firm than it was before, but it's still too, too firm to shred it. Basically, we want to make it shreddable, but we don't want to overcook it, okay? So we're now we're going to set the timer for a half hour after we kind of mix it around a little bit, flip everything over, put the top back on, put it in for another half hour, uh, unless you don't need it. If, if yours is done, maybe it's done. Mine needs an, at least another half hour, so I'm going to throw it in for another half hour. All right, guys, so after another half hour, I think now we got right what we are looking for. See, it is, it's not completely falling apart, but it is extremely tender. If I just give it a light pull, it'll start to shred very, very easily. But once again, it's not just completely mush and falling apart. That's very important. Do not cook it totally to mush. Notice the bone just comes right out. So if the bone comes out clean but there's still a slight firmness to it, um, that's what you want. You want to be able to easily break it uh, without forcing it, but you don't want it to be totally mush. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take it all out of the liquid so it cools off enough. You need it to be a little cooler in order to shred it, and also, too, it's also going to keep keep cooking a little bit. Okay, so we are going to take... Um, I'm just putting this in this cast iron because I had it readily available right here, but just put it into a different container really anything and you're gonna put this in the fridge for a half hour at least a half hour you could even leave you could even do this the night before the next day shred it heat it up be ready to go and everything but what we're gonna do is we're gonna take all the meat out
Okay, and we're gonna put all this all this meat here. This is all going in the fridge to cool off. Um, we want it cool enough where we don't burn ourselves trying to shred it. And also it's gonna carry over cook a slight more and make it just a slight bit more tender. Here, we are gonna strain this off and use this liquid to make a barbecue sauce or a, uh, a light barbecue sauce, like a vinegar based basting sauce. And you'll see. So, um, let me grab a strainer, let me throw this in the fridge and we'll be right back. All right guys, now we are gonna take this liquid and we are going to strain off all the little pieces and everything in here. So I just got a colander inside a little pot there that I'm going to throw on the stove. All right. And this is going to be the base for our barbecue sauce with the fat and all. You want to keep all that, all that in there. The fat is the flavor and it's going to help. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that on a low simmer, get that going. But while that is going, I'm gonna throw in another about a half roll, half a cup of apple cider vinegar. I'm gonna put in a little bit of brown sugar, like about a eh, quarter of a cup, third of a cup, just an eyeball, some black pepper, of course. Okay, that's good. And a little bit of and a little bit of tomato ketchup, but I don't know where it is. Let me find my ketchup and I'll be right. Okay. Also a little bit of ketchup. Ketchup is always the base for almost all barbecue sauces. And um just a couple of teaspoons worth. Maybe about a quarter of a cup at the most. Okay, and then we're just gonna, oh, that one's dirty. That's the one I meant to grab. Nice clean spatula. Give it a little stir. And let that simmer. I actually prefer to leave the fat in it. I think uh, you get a better tasting sauce. But if you're very health conscious and you wanna make it lower fat, before you add all the other ingredients and you strain it off, you can let it cool in the fridge and scrape off some of the fat off the top. But uh, I actually prefer to leave the fat in there. I think that gives it a lot of flavor. So we're gonna let that simmer for a little bit. I'm also gonna throw in one big clove of garlic. I'm just gonna lightly smash it and I'm gonna leave the skin on it and everything. And we're just gonna let that go, okay? So while the, the pork is cooling in the fridge, we got this going here. Just gonna let it simmer for a bit. All right, guys, so this is cool enough to shred. We got our basting sauce um, just kind of simmering here. And once again, this is just for basting. This isn't you're going to be your final barbecue sauce. This is just for basting it and stuff. So there's two ways you can do this. You can either just pull it apart, which is how traditionally they will do this in the south. And uh, you just literally pull it. That's why it's called pulled pork. Um, and you just pull it um, really, really easy. Or you can shred it using two forks, which is what most people do. I'd say nowadays, but I don't know. You, some people still prefer one way or the other. The big chunks of fat like this, you can set aside because these are there's a little piece of meat in here you can take off, but the rest of this is all just fat. Um, unless you want that in there, but I, I usually discard this or give it to the dog, add it to the dog food later. But yeah, you can take two forks, and um, same thing. You can just kind of shred it apart like this if you don't want to get your hands in it. I'll let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. So you just take one fork to hold it, and then the other one you can just kind of pull it apart and start to start to shred it like so. So either way, you're gonna have to shred all of this. Okay, so I'm just gonna put it back in the container here. Um, you can, if you're gonna throw it back in the oven, because you're gonna have to finish it, um, you're gonna have to put it back in the oven or put it in a crock pot or something. So I'm just gonna do it back in here because you know, make less dishes, use something I've already been using. So I'm gonna go ahead and shred all this. Um, maybe we'll time lapse it and we'll be back.
All right, guys, so we got this all shredded up, and then look how good this is. And you want it totally random like this. You don't want to shred it to hell. You don't want it to be all mush. Uh, you want it to still have some structure to it, but you want it mostly in strands. Uh, and just like that. Here is all of the fat. This is all just pure fat that we took off of it. So that's not going to go in. That's going to just go in the trash or, or you, I don't know, give it to the dog or something. Okay, now here, this is our basting sauce. Now this is just, we're just going to put a little bit on this while we reheat it and bring it back up. So, um, let me grab a little spoon here. This will work. A little ladle. And we're just going to ladle this on there. And you just want to make it a little wet. You don't want it to go crazy with this. You don't want to make it too greasy because there's a lot of fat still in here because you have all the pan drippings, but they're also all the everything that it was cooked in all that flavor because that's good we just want to make it a little wet not too crazy and then we're going to add a little more apple cider vinegar that's good okay now we are going to you could either here if you have a slow cooker or a crock pot just throw it in your crock pot for an hour or so then it's ready to serve and we'll show you how to serve it here in a second but i'm going to just throw this back in my oven for about a half hour uh, back at 350 and we'll check back. So let me just reheat this back up a little bit and we will uh, get to plating. All right guys, so we let it go in the oven for about a half hour and as you can see, uh, it is moist but it is not like dripping wet with barbecue sauce or anything like that. This is what you want. You can always add sauce to it after depending on how you serve it. So the three most common ways to serve it I'm gonna show you. First off would just be your pulled pork sandwich. Just get a hamburger bun, throw some on there with a little barbecue sauce of your choice on top, bada bing, bada boom, super, super easy. Okay, now if you want uh, something a little different, we could make tacos with it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna make a very e quick and easy coleslaw, so this is just some green cabbage. I already grated a little pepper on it. We are gonna take just a tiny bit of our pan drippings. If, uh, well, a vegetarian wouldn't be eating the pork, but if there's a vegetarian in it, don't put that in there. Okay, um, from there, we're just gonna put a little spoonful of mayo. That's good, like two smaller spoonfuls. And then we're going to use a little bit of apple cider vinegar. Just about equal parts to the mayo. Give that a little stir. I'm actually, I am going to add a little bit more pepper. Just going to work that around, mix it in really good. If you want to make it a little wetter, a little looser, just add a little more vinegar. If you want to tighten it up a bit, just add a little more coleslaw. And that is pretty good right there. Okay, so now we are going to take our taco. We are going to take a little bit of right there. We are going to top it off with a little bit of coleslaw. All right. Then from there, we are gonna just pull off a little bit of cilantro that I got from the grocery store. Put a little cilantro on that. And if you want, you could put a little bit of hot sauce or barbecue sauce right on top of that. You could also just do the pork with cilantro and onion. I don't have onion, so we're doing the coleslaw. Now, um, for your vegetarian people, or sorry, I mean carb-free people, not vegetarian people. Carb-free people, you can make a nice little bowl there. Then you put some hot sauce, or if you don't mind a little bit of carbs, you can drizzle a little barbecue sauce on top of that. And boom, that is three quick and easy ways. And we have enough to feed the whole family. You could, uh, if you want to double the size of the recipe, it's about the same thing. Just try to use a little bigger container, or have two containers going at once. But we got three different ways to eat it. Let's go give them a try. All right, guys, let's try this out. So let's start off with the taco. That's actually my favorite way to eat it. Normally I eat it just the meat and the cabbage because I'm trying to lose weight, but I'm going for the taco today. Mm. Mm -mm. Absolutely perfectly tender, just how I like it. I make this quite often. Very easy, you can't really mess this up. Uh, let's go for the bun. Mm. 
If you're a big barbecue sauce person, definitely bun's the way to go because you can put a lot of sauce on it. Mmm, yeah. that's so good. But I honestly really like eating it just with the cabbage and the meat. And this is normally how I how I eat it because I've been trying to lose weight for like ever. Oliver, come here. Come here. Come up so that people can see you. Oliver, up. Come here. Up, up. Good boy. Oh, good boy. Oliver likes it too. Yeah, this is something I make all the time. And it's great because you can freeze it. You can use it to make all different things. Besides just this, you, you could literally use this pork for whatever you wanted to make. Um, and it's very cheap. Sometimes you can get these on sale for like crazy cheap. Like, look at this one. I, I just picked up another one. Six bucks. You can feed the whole family for six bucks and have a lot of leftovers. So thank you guys for watching. That's the Coca-Cola braised pulled pork. And remember, you could use any soda you want. Just mix it up, see what works good for you. I've always used Coca-Cola, but get creative. Use some root beer, Dr. Pepper, whatever you like, give it a try. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching and uh, happy eating.